Okay, so today I'll show you something interesting. This is an uh, ebook reader, and as you see, uh, this is a single ebook file which contains uh, Nextcloud's news feeds. So um, I've written a Python script uh, that interacts with the Nextcloud's API and generates the um, EPUB file starting from separate uh, HTML files. And the result is that uh, you can um, uh, put this file on an e reader read all your news uh, as you would on the um, smartphone or on the computer with the advantage that you won't strain your eyes. Yes, it's the uh, system is not perfect. You'll have your feeds uh, marked as read optionally. So it's um, after all, they are synchronized with the server. And so now we'll see how to do this, uh, the various elements of the script, its configuration, and uh, you already seen the result. And uh, so uh, let's go on. So the script is called ncnews to epub.py and uh, there are some, um, yeah, lots of imports because we need lots of um, different uh, features. And so we'll start uh, with these functions. So there is a base uh, URL, which if you look at the um, Nextcloud uh, news API, uh, I'm using version 1.3 for the script. So here is written uh, everything you need to know. So for example, initial sync, several get requests. So then see the feeds, this one is this one. So base URL and feeds. Uh, obviously all requests are authenticated. So you need a user and password, which we'll see later how to generate one. All the requests return JSON objects. And uh, once you have a JSON object, you can uh, load it into a Python dict. And so this first functions returns all the feed sources. So in, uh, in practice, all the um, websites. Uh, this second function returns the single feeds for each source. Uh, so it's uh, still base URL items. So the, sin the single feeds, the um, source ID and the number of, uh, as it's written here, the number of feeds per source. And so if you go to the um, documentation for a moment, so this one is uh, the um, get method for the items. So here, as I was saying, so as I said, ID is the ID of the feed type. Uh, okay, so here I put zero because we're interested in the single feed, uh, but of course there are other types. Offset is always set to zero and offset corresponds to all their feed IDs. And then we have the batch size. Uh, this one uh, is um, selected by the user in the configuration that we'll see later. Okay, so if you go on, we have this function, the build HTML function. This one is the one that is, um, yeah, that generates the HTML. So you start with a normal HTML file which you can generate by hand like this. So you get title, URL, author, update. You can add your fees uh, as you want them. And uh, of course, all this um, this data is fed by Nextcloud. And uh, so uh, an important thing is the prop date, which needs to be transformed into a string. Otherwise, it's an, uh, an integer corresponding to the epoch seconds. If we search types here, there's this table. Okay, which um, explains you all the fields, the items fields. Of course, here it's written that um, the following attributes are not sanitized. And so we'll see what this means later and how to fix this. But for the moment, we'll see these fields. So in my script, I just use a bunch of them, not all of them, because we don't need them in the HTML. So we need the title, URL, author, pub date, and the body. So, uh, author, yeah, can be a null string. Title, still a null can be a string or an empty value. Body the same. Update, uh, okay, is an integer or null if it's not specified. And then uh, URL, still the same. So they are all, in practice, they're all strings. And so if we print this in the script, we'll, um, we'll have a normal HTML file. Uh, then we have, um, this function here, which is called post actions. So this, um, this function is needed if, uh, for example, at the end of the um, 
generation of the EPUB. You want to mark uh, all the extracted articles as read or start. You'll use this function. So you still pass the base URL, the user, the password. This one is important because it's a list of integers containing all the feed IDs read. And uh, so uh, the action in the script is just, um, here you can see, star. Okay, so mark to, okay, for example, one of the actions is this one. So mark multiple items as start. And you'll pass, um, see, item IDs and the IDs of the um, red feeds. So here, item IDs and the uh, feed red. Okay, mark multiple items as red is uh, works in the same way. So IDs of the items. And okay, so that's it for the external functions. Now we can go to the main uh, function here. Okay, so all the files are saved in the in the in a cache directory, which is computed with this module, the platform disk module. Then I create um, this directory here inside it, and uh, every time you every time you run the script, uh, this cache directory is deleted and recreated. Uh, then we we get the feed sources here, calling the first functions first function here. Then we iterate on each source, and we get um, a certain number of uh, feeds for each source. Uh, we call the the other function still authenticated request, the source uh, number here, the source ID. And once we have the feeds, we have a single feed per HTML file, we build the HTML, we, we sanitize it or clean it with uh, this library NH3. And then we um, add the ID of the, of the feed, of the feed we just uh, transformed into HTML to this list that we need later. And we write the HTML file in the cache directory. So as you see here, HTML file equals um, cache directory, then the subdirectory NC news to EPUB, and then HTML file name. So this is, will be the final path for this file. Then we need to get a list of all the names of the files in the cache file, because these are the files that are going to be transformed into the EPUB. These three lines compute the full path of the EPUB file using the current uh, date and time, like this. And finally, we need to transform all the single HTML files into a single EPUB file. And uh, the program called Pandoc comes to rescue because it's a very powerful um, software. So you just say, um, so pandoc from HTML to EPUB, and then you set the, in the title, this is optional, but I just put it here anyway. So with the EPUB file name, this one here. Uh, then you pass the, the list of HTML files, which is this one. And finally, the path of the output file, and then you execute this with a shell. So here I'm using my library that executes uh, commands for the shell. And finally, there are the two post actions. So the um, mark as read and mark as start, which you can configure to do it or not in the configuration file. Okay, so now we'll pass to the configuration file, which is called uh, ncnews to epub.yaml. And so, um, yeah, you need to define the host the domain so the next cloud instance domain, the user, the password, which we'll see how to do it in a moment. Uh, then, the, of course, the number of um, feeds which you want for each uh, source. For example, 10, but you can put any number. Mark as read or mark as start post actions, so you can decide whether to do it or not. I suggest using a, certainly this one, so you don't have your next cloud instance clogged with all the, the feeds. So this one is practically required. Then you'll decide if you want to mark them as start is your choice. And then there is the Pandoc binary, which you can define here. But since I installed it with the APT, it's, this is the default path. You should have it packaged for your, for your distribution. And then the output directory, this is where, um, this is where the script will write the file 
in this dire directory. So home, I use documents. Okay, so now I want to show you how to install the virtual environment because as I said before, there are lots of dependencies. And so, um, of course, you first need to install Pandoc, but this is, should be packaged for your distribution. Then you need to generate the Python environment. So you just need these um, two, two commands here. Of course, I did the, configura the configuration file with the appropriate user and password, etc. And to run it, you just need to run to execute make run like this. So we'll start with the first one. So make generate freeze. See, there's auto completion as well. Okay, so it's done. We have the this directory. So vmv and c news to epub. Then you do make uh, install dev. Okay. Okay. So now I'll show you how to add the um, app password. So you need to go to the user settings. Then you go on uh, security. You go down, down, down. And here you can create a new, uh, it, it's uh, called device insertion, a new app password here. So you can call it, I call it test uh, ebook like this. Okay. So there's a um, password and the username. And then you need to uh, replace the existing ones with the ones you generated like this. And after doing that, you just need to run the, um, the script. So you make, you run make um, like this, make run. And it's finished because there are just a few articles for this uh, user. As you see here, I put as uh, with this uh, directory. And so you have your EPUB file. Okay. Now I'll show you the result in the in an EPUB reader. And okay, so this is the result if you use Ocular as your EPUB reader. So this first page is uh, yeah, very very simple. And then you have all the articles. And uh, see, as you see, these are different because of the previous ones in the um, in the reader are, were already marked as right so we have the next ones so this time i selected the uh, two articles for each source and yeah see it's not very see the images are here yeah, not very practical but it works uh, before closing off i want to show you the the cached html files so here if we do ls home Let's cache and see, okay, which is this directory anyway. So we get these uh, six files. So if we start with the first one, see it's a simple HTML file. See, it's nothing uh, strange really, nothing unusual, I think. And yeah, so I think it's time to close off the video. So if you like the video as usual, put a thumbs up and uh, comment. And remember to subscribe. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and bye bye.